Hello, and welcome to Home Space and Reason, a podcast about creating a home that thrives. Hi there, I'm Christina Browning, your host. If you know your home could be so much more than it is, I discuss home functionality, aesthetics, and automation. I'm a realtor in Portland, Oregon, and a home functionality coach nationwide. I geek out on every subject imaginable regarding your home and yard, challenging you to think of your space differently to get the most out of every square foot. I pose questions for you to think through about your space and your reason. This podcast is all positive, offering you virtual fist bumps and celebrating every win. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can still aim for your best every day. Follow along on social media under the handle Space and Reason. Episode 41. In this episode, let's discuss doorbell functionality, aesthetics, and automation, along with front door locks, mail slots, and front door handles. Imagine I've just met you and your partner early in the evening at a function. As the night goes on, we hit it off and chat it up until the late hours of the evening. The event ends and we vow that we must get together again. We connect later in the week and you invite us over for hors d'oeuvres and happy hour. Navigation gets me to your street. I slow down as I start identifying house numbers. We spot your abode and park. I grab the chilled bottle of bubbly and the fresh fruit plate and step out of the car. Since this is the first time to your home, I notice everything. The path leading up to the door, the steps, the door color, the items around your door, and I ring your doorbell. All of this is making a first impression about who lives here. Just like choosing what color of car you drive, choosing accessories and colors for the front of your home speak to the personalities of those living inside. The doorbell can be an afterthought, or it can be an opportunity to punctuate your home with an exclamation point. Companies like Restoration Hardware started recreating vintage delights and Pinterest became a thing for folders upon folders of visual examples of what could be. From vintage doorbells to smart connected versions, your values and tastes need to be taken into consideration when making a decision. What's important to me? The doorbell actually has a long history that goes back to the Industrial Revolution. According to an article by Curbed.com, early doorbells on record usually worked in one of two ways. Twist doorbells used a key-like mechanism on the outside of the door that strikes a bell on the inside when twisted, similar to cranking a wind-up toy. Pull doorbells, on the other hand, could be rung by pulling a rope that rings a small bell on the inside of the house. The Industrial Revolution modernized many aspects of everyday life through technological advancements in areas such as steam power, machine tools, textiles, and iron making, among others. William Murdoch, a Scottish steam engineer and inventor who was employed by British engineering and manufacturing firm Bolton and Watt, installed the first mechanized doorbell in his home. Perhaps taking a cue from the steam industry, Murdoch's doorbell operated on a system of pipes and compressed air. The first electric doorbell was invented in 1831 by Joseph Henry, an American scientist who later went on to serve as first secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. But electric doorbells only became widespread after 1913 when the introduction of electric transformers eliminated the need for expensive batteries and instead relied on a household's electrical current. In the 1930s, musical door chimes emerged as a tasteful alternative to relatively jarring monotone buzzers. 
One of the most popular door chime tunes is the Westminster Quarters, which can also be heard ringing out from many churches' bell towers. Centuries later, we still rely on doorbells to see who's at the door. As many of you know, I'm a realtor in Portland, Oregon, and Portland is known for its avant-garde and non-traditional style. Many folks here appreciate personality-defining design adorning their homes with unique exterior accessories like doorbells, choosing paint colors that are not so 50 shades of gray, and embracing originality. This could be why walking in new neighborhoods is one of my most favorite things to do. It's also why I have zero reservations about snapping photos of these details while the owners peer out the window wondering why this stranger is taking photos of their home. It could be that it's me adoring your doorbell choice. I've pinned a lot on my Pinterest board called Doorbells and Other Front Door Accessories, and my handle there is space and reason if you aren't connected yet. Right along with doorbells, you should consider door handles and therefore locks since they all hang out in the same part of your home. Keypad-operated door locks are convenient. They allow you to create entry codes for temporary access for house cleaners or pet sitters and contractors. You can delete the codes when access is no longer needed without having to change the lock or call a locksmith. Many smart locks allow you to create and delete PIN codes from your smartphone, but many of these high-tech locks are still susceptible to physical break-in tactics such as drilling and picking which quite frankly is no different from old-fashioned key-style locks, also susceptible to drilling and picking. Think about door locks by putting them in three baskets. The conventional, non-connected deadbolts, smart locks, and then retrofit smart locks. Retrofit locks replace the interior side of your deadbolt, which allows you to essentially keep your existing deadbolt and keys while gaining smart features such as remote control and auto unlocking. I'll include a link to a great article by Consumer Reports on their review of all these three categories which they tested and reviewed. Let's dip our toes in the water of this subject by discussing the smart doorbells. Now with that, I will say the smart ones aren't necessarily aesthetically pleasing. I am excited for the day when the aesthetic of a traditional doorbell can be incorporated into the design of the smart doorbells. The Arlo Video Doorbell was the top pick by the New York Times for video doorbells, citing it delivers fewer false alerts than any other video doorbell they tested with a subscription plan that can distinguish among people, animals, cars, and packages. It also shows a more complete head-to-toe view in the front of your doorway. It includes a built-in siren to scare away intruders and has an internal battery in case the power goes out. It also kept false alerts, a problem with many models, to a minimum. For that advanced sensing and the ability to capture video clips up to five minutes long, you need a $3 per month Arlo Smart subscription. The Arlo also captures crisp video with a 1536 by 1536 resolution and a wide 180 degree viewing angle in a square format. This provides a comprehensive vertical and horizontal view of what's going on in front of your door, whether it's deliveries or visiting raccoons. It also integrates with smart home systems. The Nest Hello is capable of streaming live HD footage to your phone, so no matter where you are, you can still see who's there. It comes with three pre-recorded messages for when you're not home, and you can even teach it to recognize familiar faces and send a special alert. Unlike other motion sensing video doorbells, Nest's video doorbell streams and records video 24-7, even in the dark. It's the most advanced DIY smart doorbell because unlike others, it records and stores video 24-7 at 1600 by 1200 pixels, which is still crisp but slightly lower resolution than Arlo and Eufy. 
for easy access. Google's cloud service also automatically tags clips that include motion or people using facial recognition software to learn and identify over time who's coming and going. This comprehensive approach does come with an elevated price, however. A Nest Aware subscription, which is essential for video recording, costs more than others for storage. If you pay annually, you can save a few bucks. Pricing can rise and fall for all things, so I'll put a list in the podcast notes so you can check current pricing depending on when you're listening to this episode. The Eufy Security Video Doorbell includes a lot of features that most companies charge for, such as enough internal memory to store up to 30 days worth of video, as well as the ability to distinguish between people and other motion like birds or swaying branches. They say they do, however, think the Arlo was a little more accurate in this area. The Eufy doesn't have as wide a viewing angle as the Arlo, but the Eufy doorbell creates clear recordings as long as motion is detected for up to five minutes, and it stores those clips in its four gigabytes of built-in memory. Because the Eufy doesn't have a cloud component, you don't have to worry about bandwidth caps or added fees for cloud plans, but if your camera gets stolen, you'll lose that video. If you prefer to use the cloud, it's not an option that Eufy offers yet, although when you listen to this, it may be an option. And although the Eufy draws power from your existing doorbell wires, it won't work with your existing chime, but it does include its own wireless plug-in chime, so they said they feel like it's not a big problem. Blue by ADT is freedom from contracts, and it is DIY setup. Cameras, doorbells, security system, all of it. Blue's cameras are currently compatible with the Amazon Echo and IFTTT. The Apple HomeKit compatibility is coming soon. You choose between a full DIY system or advanced smart cameras and even the alerts you get and how you receive them. You can speak to visitors or housemates with your camera's two-way talk feature. If you have cameras in your home, you can see what's up with the live HD feed from your cameras and get instant alerts for motion detection and facial recognition events. As always, I'll post information in the podcast notes. You need to see Spore Doorbells. Dude, when Ted Pearson, a Western Washington University alum, considered objects in the design environment that could use an overhaul, he realized the doorbell button was due for some attention. Pearson and former business partner Tom Gordon received accolades for prototypes from top design magazines, and Spore was created in 1996. The true line is available in several metal finishes and is available with or without illumination. It is also the smallest in diameter of their doorbell buttons, so it can be used in spots with tighter constraints. I love that it is available in traditional metal finish with illumination, giving it a modern and clean vibe. The illumination color can change the style that black hardware conveys. For example, blue illumination on a black true doorbell button makes it read very contemporary. Amber illumination makes the black resonate with older and traditional craftsman style houses. White illumination and black doorbell buttons read super modern and minimal, yet it also looks fantastic on traditional homes and modern farmhouses. They also carry the ring door chimes in black in two sizes, and it's compatible compatible with video doorbell systems as well as spore doorbell buttons. I'm going to include a link to a blog post by Claire Heffer, a design and illustrator that put together a fabulous visual collection of front doors that you can peruse. And these images many times give you one snap of all these components in one vignette so you can see how the doorbell, door handle, mail slot, or door knocker all play in the same sandbox. So you can't make a choice on one without considering the other. All the components, the door color, even if it's wood, will need to be considered when thinking of its handle. Dark door with dark handle would blend in. Dark door with brighter handle will stand out. Mail slot on the door or mail slot next to it in the wall. 
Maybe you have a mailbox at the street, and so you don't need a mail slot at all. That might free up enough space for a door knocker. Or maybe you omit all of those things in the name of minimalism and clean lines, or even for windows for letting in more light. If your front door is going to be a bright punch of color, you might consider what else you include in that same color, because too many things painted the same can become matchy-matchy and DIY gone wrong real fast. Because there are virtually an unlimited amount of combinations, I would recommend you go down this rabbit hole of examining and studying front doors so you can eliminate what you don't like and then start to dial in the door color, which then allows you to step back again and determine the doorbell and handle aesthetics. Next, let's talk about two other front door relevant items, the kick plate and the door knocker. The kick plate is a sheet of material attached to the bottom of your door to protect it from damage and gets its name from, as you might imagine, when people kick the door open because they have their hands full. You don't need a kick plate, but if you anticipate a lot of wear and tear, this might be a good idea. Door knockers are sometimes hung on the exterior of the door too, and according to my research, they are more popular in England than any other country and can be found everywhere, even in the most remote locations. One of the most enduring themes for knockers has been the lion's head, symbolizing bravery, nobility, strength, and valor. Lion's head knockers were popular in the American colonies up until the revolution when the eagle took precedence. So now I'm dying to know if any of you have an eagle or lion head door knocker. I geek out on history and would love to see any original door knockers you might have by posting them on social media with the hashtag home space and reason. As a realtor, when I'm showing buyers a home, as I'm unlocking the lockbox that may be, I don't know, linked to the front porch railing, for example, they have time to observe what shape the door is in, what the door handle looks like, how much care the owner took in maintaining this home. So much can be derived in this one to two minute block of time while we briefly pause for entry. Oftentimes, buyers don't even realize an impression has already been made. If you happen to know someone in the market to buy or sell in the greater metro Portland, Oregon area, kindly send them my way. The finest compliment I could ever receive is the confidence of your referral. Let's talk about finishes for the doorbells, knockers, handles, hinges, and locks. At no other time have we had such immense choices. Ordering online has opened up the international purchase of goods like never before, allowing us to buy from artisans in tiny towns far from where we ourselves live. I'm going to cover just a chunk, which by no means represents a complete list, but it will get your squirrel running. Aged bronze works exceptionally well with ornate craftsman style aesthetic, but it's certainly not limited to that. Oil rubbed bronze lends itself to Mediterranean and Tuscan settings. The dark brown tones in the hardware lends itself to warm colors. Oil rub bronze is a living finish that changes over time to give it constantly evolving presentations. But aged bronze comes with the two-tone look that oil-rubbed bronze will eventually get. The difference is that the oil-rubbed bronze comes from being used, so it is unique to you. Satin nickel and stainless steel are both silverish, but the finish of stainless is always shiny, whereas satin or brushed nickel has a matte or semi-gloss finish. Polished chrome and bright chrome are both shiny silver, almost high gloss in its reflective properties, but easily shows fingerprints and smudging. It's inspired by the Art Deco movement and the jazzy style of the Roaring Twenties, but can easily transition into the minimalist approach of the 30s and 40s that's becoming more popular in modern styling. Satin brass will remind you of the gold that was so popular in the 1990s because it was all the rage. 
Antique brass is a modern version if you're going for a gold finish and is becoming one of the most popular choices for the home. Matte black will give you a modern look that takes style cues from wrought iron fences and fixtures made by blacksmiths in the colonial era. So although that gives you a modern look, it's a subtle nod to the blacksmiths of years gone by. Copper is a finish that I adore because you don't see it everywhere. Usually copper on the outside of a home near the ocean will patina more quickly than copper located inland. Over time, it will patina to a deep bronze color and finally to a distinct green color. The patina process of copper is so completely natural and one of the biggest draws for people who like its look. However, if you prefer the newer look like a copper penny, it can be restored with the help of some products and a little elbow grease. The knobs, pulls, and handles on your cabinetry and doors inside your home are one of the only things you're going to be touching every single day. From simply walking into the bathroom to grabbing a glass of water, you need the knobs and handles to both be beautiful and highly functional. This topic is so closely related to the front door hardware we're talking about today that I wanted to mention episode 24 here. I deep dive into the aesthetics you want, the function you need, and options available. So if you haven't had a chance yet to listen to episode 24, or you did and want a refresher, have another listen. I even include a list of drool-worthy online hardware shops so you can peruse until your heart's content. And now for the questions to ask yourself about your home space and your reason. Question number one, is my front door dark, light, or medium in color? This could be paint or wood or metal. Put it in one of these three color intensity categories, dark, light, or medium. And then consider question number two. Do I want my doorbell and or handle to stand out or be more subtle against the door or house color? Do I want swagger or understated style? Do I want to put some jewelry of sorts on my mid-century modern house by finding the right door accessories that convey that era? Based on your answers here, it will guide you toward dark or light metal doorbells, handles, or mail slots. Question number three, what does your doormat convey and how could your doorbell or handles negatively compete with it or positively complement it? Similar to wearing a giant statement-making necklace with an understated plain black dress, you don't want too many things screaming for attention and therefore competing. So if you have a simple and clean doormat, maybe your doorbell and handle could have a little more to say. Just this past week, I enjoyed doing a home functionality coaching session with a wonderful client named Selena from the UK. She went to my website, spaceandreason.com, and clicked on the Imagine tab. We discussed her very long living room and the challenges she's had over the years in furnishing it to feel right. What fun it was learning about her and her family, the things she loves, and the many ways this room functions. So no matter where you live, I can do a video home functionality consult with you. You're going to want to subscribe to this podcast and join the Facebook group called Home Space and Reason. If you're anything like me, you appreciate visual examples, and so the two go hand in hand. If you subscribe and generally listen as the podcasts are released, it's relatively easy to reference the coinciding images hitting the social media pages. The private Facebook group is a good place to post questions and chime in with like-minded people. If you haven't had a chance yet, please write a quick review because it lets others know that this is a podcast worth listening to. Thanks for geeking out with me today. I look forward to seeing your post about your doorbells, your door knockers, and accessories using the hashtag home space and reason. I'll meet you back here for the next episode.